losing, losing your way, losing our way, uh, losing our way. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a personal odyssey on uh, teaching computer science for 28 years. Uh, I've actually been teaching it a little longer for 28 years, but 28 turns out to be a good number for a variety of reasons. Uh, the first is that it takes us back to 1984. And, and I want to talk about 1984 and why 28 years ago is a little bit interesting. Um, my, first, my first love in some ways was math. I started out life as a math teacher. I didn't really start out life as a math teacher, uh, but that's the first job I had. And for those of you that know some math, you might know that six is a perfect number. It's one plus two plus three. So 28 years ago is another perfect number. Maybe it's a perfect storm somehow because it turns out that in 1984, uh, a lot of things happened. And then I want to use those things that happened to tell you about why we've lost our way in teaching in general, echoing something that one of our earlier speakers spoke about, and how we're trying to get back on our way and what I'm trying to do about it. So you can see that 28 is a perfect number. But it will turn out that if I give this talk next year, I'll come up with another reason to talk about 1984. Because uh, it's really 1984 that's the, that's the good thing. Uh, 1984, a few things happened. First of all, for those of you that have never read that book, really, uh, it was 1984. And for those of you that weren't born yet, which is probably most of you, for those of us that were born well before that, sneaking up on 1984 was pretty freaky. Like, we'd been reading about it, and all of a sudden it was going to be 1984. What were you going to do? There was no Big Brother in 1984, although arguably today there might be. And he was probably born in 1984. His name is Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> and he knows everything about you. I know he knows everything about me. And it's kind of fun that he does. Uh, in 1984, William Gibson had just coined the term cyberspace. He wrote a book called Neuromancer. That happened in 1984. And in 1984, this computer on, their, on your lower right was just created, the first Mac. We just saw earlier Steve Jobs talking to us about think different. And the computer you see on your right, that's the computer I first used when I taught the first AP course in 1984. Uh, advanced placement. I had taught programming before that, but not computer science. So I'm trying to differentiate so that I can explain the role that you all have been part of, because many of you uh, have been in courses I taught. Maybe some of you will be in courses that I teach later. The computer that I took out a bank loan for, $3,000. I didn't have the money. Uh, the computer on the right is actually in my pocket now. On my right, your left. Eh, whichever way. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm confused. <laughs> but it's in my pocket, and that $900, that's the unlocked price. If you're willing to pay for a plan, you can get that computer for $300. That's a tenth of what I paid. And it's a thousand times faster, and it has a thousand times more memory, and we're still teaching computer science, it's going to turn out, like we did in 1984. And yet we have this device that's connected to the internet, and the internet has changed everything. And we should probably figure out how to help that change what we do. So I'm going to tell you about how I'm trying to find my way, and how one of the ways I'm finding it is by having the people in my classes help me out. So earlier today, you heard, if you were here, and some of you were, uh, a talk by Katrina Wisdom. I, 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 she's never been in one of my classes that I know of, but it, she could have been. But she, she's a student, and she reminds me that there's a lot to learn from your students when you're a teacher. Maybe it, it's easy to think if you're a student that you're going to learn something from your teachers, but it works both ways. The other reason it works both ways is because as we get older, we, uh, we need to have young people around to tell us what's really going on. So I'm going to tell you a story about some people that I had in class who I've learned from. Uh, maybe I taught them something. Maybe they remember me, but arguably they don't even though they do. And I'll give you some anecdotal evidence about that. Here's one of my students, Duke class of 2000, Luis Vanna. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about him. Some of you already know it, but many of you don't. It's about computer science and changing the world. So Luis is changing the world. Uh, 
And this is a picture from him at his wedding, which he didn't invite me to. <laughs> I've been teaching at Duke for almost 25 years. I've been to one student's wedding. So for all of you that are students, think about the professors you have and whether you want them to come to your wedding. You never know, maybe they'll have a good time. Uh, the one wedding I did go to changed my, way, my, my life in some ways in terms of professional stuff, but I'm not going to tell you about that now. I'm going to tell you about Luis. Here's an email I got from him. He graduated in 2000. I'm not sure if you remember me. Uh, well, I had him in three classes. He was my TA. I mean, really? <laughs> but that's, it's good to start off in a modest way. And he was looking for something. He wanted something from me. Uh, a program that generated random sentences, which we had done in as an assignment. And this was kind of almost really before everything was online. I mean, there was an internet, but every, we didn't have all our stuff online, so he had to write to me. He says, I won't sell it or anything, which is a little bit interesting because you'll see what he did with the way, one of the things that he's invented that's changed the world. And again, some of you may know this story, some of you don't. Every one of you has typed in one of these and maybe found it annoying. You want a Facebook account? You do this. You want a Gmail account? You do this. You want to buy tickets at Ticketmaster? You have to write, put these in. Uh, what Luis decided to do was figure out how to stop something that annoyed him. He and his advisor had built one of these systems and they're called CAPTCHAs for a completely automated public Turing test to tell computers and humans apart. And as he says, and you can see him talking in a TEDx talk, I'm gonna tell you what he talks about in a minute. He needed a way of making computers not be able to solve this problem that computers were going to test because he wanted to make sure that you couldn't buy 10,000 tickets by writing a program, but it had to be a human. And he was annoyed that people were solving these problems every day just wastefully solving something just to get in to buy tickets. So he had this great idea. Instead of one word, his idea was to put two words there. One of the words the computer knows. The other word the computer isn't sure of because it's been digitized from an old book. And it turns out Google has digitized millions of books, not all of which can be recognized automatically. So when you enter those words, one of them proves that you're a human because the computer knows the answer. The other, the computer's not sure of, and you're giving it evidence of what it might be. And 100 people are solving that word also. And when you're done, the computer now knows a word it didn't know because your results are pooled with many other people. 200 million of these are solved every day. 150,000 people hours of work done by people solving these every day. Every back issue of the New York Times has been digitized by people solving these. Thousands of books every day are become part of Google's archive, available to historians, available for our use. Because Luis had this idea that he was going to say, people should actually do work when they're trying to help the computer solve a problem. So he invented a field, human computation. Uh, he won a MacArthur Award, which they give for being a genius when you don't know it. I'm pretty sure he does know it. Uh, but, but he was a student, and he's one of the ways we're going to help find our way. His newest project, which you can see on TEDx, is a way that you can learn a language that you don't know by helping to translate the web. And if you really think about that, you're going to translate the web by learning a language you don't know. It sounds to me completely, completely impossible. I don't see how it's going to work, but I'm guessing it's going to. Uh, by, and you're going to learn a language, and I'm going to use languages to talk about how we lost our way. I've been involved with teaching computer science for a long time. In 1984, I mentioned that the first computer science AP, Advanced Placement Course, was offered. It used the language Pascal. And then in 99, I was involved in changing that to C++, and then 2004, I was involved in changing that to Java. And for those of you that don't know computer languages, it might as well be blah, 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 blah. Uh, and those changes were important. We had already made the changes at Duke, and then I became part of a national initiative to change them everywhere. But they also didn't matter. Changing the language uh, to many people was like rearranging, quote, the deck chairs on the Titanic, because 
we were still doing the same stuff. Now I'm in on a new project that's been going for two years and it's not slated to finish till 2017. That's a long project. But we're going to change the way computer science is learned and taught because we need to. And I'm going to tell you why we need to. Most people don't speak computer science. And the people that do speak computer science are actually overwhelmingly white and male. If you look at the AP computer science test, it's the worst test there is in terms of women taking it compared to any other AP test. Underrepresented groups, hardly anyone takes it. The same thing is true in, in most college courses. The people taking the course look the same. And, and that's an issue because we need people to solve the world's problems that think different. You heard that earlier. And thinking different means maybe looking at people that have come through life, experienced different things. So that's the cool part about the project that I'm working on. It's very, very cool. And every day we have to, co we have to combat stereotypes like this. So when you see this word, I hope each of you has in your head a little image or a big image. But I bet it's an image of a male, wearing certain clothes, doing certain things. And, and that's the image that we have to combat. This was an article in Business Week a month ago, the rise of the programmer. And a lot of people saw it and go, yeah, I'm going to do computer science now because I am a programmer. <laughs> I want to be a programmer. Well, it turns out we have to pay attention to a different audience or we're going to lose our way. We're going to lose our way in terms of attracting the uh, whole universe of people into what we do. And, and that's what I'm trying to be a part of. I'm going to tell you two more stories about that. One is another pupil teacher story. So I have in my pocket uh, a device. And you can see here one of our former students at Duke, Go Wong, class of 2000, just like Luis. I forgot to mention that Luis did not major in computer science. He minored in it. He minored in it because I wouldn't let him graduate without taking a course that he wanted to get out of. But Gu, who was Gary when he was here, he, he wrote this app that I'm going to see if I can actually play for you. I can't. Isn't that cool? Yeah. But watch. It gets better. If I press a button, and this is his pure genius, you can't see it, but you can hear it. That's a random person somewhere in the world playing that app. <laughs> Not very well. <laughs> but he connected. OK, enough. Goodbye, good. Thank you. He connected this. So he had this passion that he combined his interests in music and computer science. He invented a language to do this. And, and this is one of the things we get to do at Duke, is f find these people. And what we want to do is find more of them. And that's how we're going to help find our way. And I hope that all of you will be a part of it. You are unlikely to remember these URLs when we leave. But it's kind of interesting that I can shorten any URL into six characters, which you need to when you're going to use Twitter. How many of you have a Twitter? How many of you think the expression having a Twitter is a little bizarre? <laughs> uh, you know, of course, that Twitter helped uh, foment revolutions in Egypt and Tunisia. At least that's the word on the street. But you can't tweet a long URL, so you have to shorten it. And the way that shortening works is kind of interesting. Unfortunately, I don't really have time to tell you that story. But it turns out that the reason it works, that you can use a shortened URL to get to a long one, is because of the way the internet works. And the internet works because people got together to make up the rules for how the internet works. And I mean it, people, anybody. You can go to a meeting of the people that make up how the internet works, and you are welcome to sit there and help them make up the rules. As long as you're reasonably technically competent, you're good. It's not about companies. It's not about governments. It's not political. It's just people hammering out technical ideas. And they do that by having, coming to consensus. And that's why the internet works. And that's why Bitly works. And, and it's, it's really an unbelievable story. These people get together. And if you read articles, it says they hum. And, and when everybody's humming, they know they're done. Unfortunately, all the people in the room are those same white males that are taking our courses. 
So, so we need you to help find our way, um, to help us change how we're doing computer science so that we can continue to do it with everybody participating, and that's my story. <laughs>